Hello everybody, uh, welcome back. Uh, it's Sunday afternoon and I thought about recording another video for you. This one is going to be a mini tutorial and this tutorial is going to be about uh, cavity maps. What are cavity maps? Cavity maps are very useful maps that we use in production. For example, if you have like a creature, let's say like a, a dragon, an elephant, any creature like that or even a human, uh, you want to make sure that you have enough information to capture all the fine detail so the cavity map is, try to imagine this like it's like a dirt map that goes right into the cavities, like inside of pores, wrinkles, you know, it's like any kind of like little holes, things like that. So the cavity maps are very useful for like texture artists. And normally the modelers are the ones providing uh, the information that later on is going to be used to generate the cavity maps. Uh, the way we do this, either we try to do this in ZBrush, let's say, yeah, if you like, if you're a ZBrush user, you're gonna let's say select everything by cavity, and then you're gonna reverse your mask, and then you're gonna actually paint inside of those masks, and then you, at the end you're gonna have like a cavity map. You can just export as regular textures, just like you export your albedo from from ZBrush. That would be your cavity map. Uh, there is also a way to export the cavity map uh, from ZBrush itself, but the result is never like I never got like a great result out of that, like from, you know from the multi map exporter. But then uh, there is another way, which is a post-processing way. And I think this one is the fastest one and the one that gives you, uh, I believe, like the most control. And the great advantage of this one, imagine this, if you have a HD model uh, with, let's say, like 30 different partitions, 30 different like dims, right? And each one of them, let's pretend it's a dragon, right? Like a, the, the, the creature is a dragon. Each one of them um, is an 8K map. So. You know, it's like if you're trying to paint all those things, let's say inside of ZBrush, it might take a while for you to go like partition by partition, right? And then paint inside and then just like export all those maps and everything. But let's say if you have access to the HD maps, like the displacement maps, you can actually create a very simple script in, um, in Photoshop that's gonna speed up the whole thing and then you can automate it. You can point to a folder, for example, and you can get the whole thing going automatically it's like fast you know it's like way faster than any other process I know and uh, obviously every single video you see on YouTube right there's a tutorial when someone mentions a way of doing something there is some always like someone who is a uh, you know it's like is the smart the smartest guy in the room is gonna say oh but this is dumb I do it this way and it's a better way right it doesn't matter you know it's like if you have a better way of doing this and a faster a faster way to do this do this in your own channel. I mean, like, just make a tutorial for everybody to see and then share your knowledge, you know? What I'm trying to do here is just, like, share the way I do it, which might not be the smartest, maybe, or the fastest, uh, but I'm an old person, right? Like, <laughs> old school. So I'm going to do this um, because I think it's a very useful way of doing it, okay? So any comments, obviously, just, like, leave it the comments below, and then uh, we're going to check it later. So uh, let me start by doing this. I'm going to share my screen here for a second. So now I have my screen here and I have some of the, the work, the personal work that I do, right? And uh, as you can tell, like when I zoom in anything here, I don't use cavity maps or any of my skin stuff. You know, it's like the skin is always, uh, I try to just use the subsurface scattering and the subsurface scattering is actually uh, penetrating those pores and everything because I'm using, uh, uh, I, I'm actually telling Arnold, uh, which is the render engine I use, to actually uh, scatter inside of the, the micro displacement. So it uses like a bump as displacement. So any little cavity is gonna be filled with a uh, scatter, right? So that's why I get like some definition in my pores without having to use cavity map, right? But at the same time, you know, it's like uh, depending of the, the studio or depending of the character you're sculpting, uh, let's say if, if it demands something like a dirt map inside of those pores and cavities, then you can actually, you know, uh, incorporate them. See, like none of those I use like any cavity maps. It's just like pure skin, right? Like n nothing too special in here. But let's say you need it, like, you know, it's like a creature like this. It's a sculpture I did like many uh, years ago. And let's say I want to do a render to look like, uh, you know, uh, more interesting with cavity maps, like in dirt maps and everything to look like an actual sculpture, right? Uh, that was dirted up and, you know, uh, some kind of treatment in the paint. Uh, so you can do that with a creature like that. There's plenty of information you can actually use for cavity uh, in here. So how do I do the cavity maps? Okay, so let's open Photoshop here for a second. And then in Photoshop, uh, 
a very cool and useful thing that you have is this actions tab here. If you don't have access right here, you can go to window uh, and then check this action uh, actions uh, uh, tabbing here. It's gonna open up this one for you. It might be a different layout and everything, but you should have access to the actions, okay? This is gonna be the first step you're gonna have. Uh, the second step you're gonna need to start with, uh, with, a, uh, with a displacement map. So the way I export my displacement maps, I export out of ZBrush as uh, EXRs, 32 bits, right? EXR, 32 bits, and the base is at zero. So uh, at, in, at that case, you know, it's like you're gonna have to, uh, uh, let's see, let me just get one in here, like an example. So I, uh, my current model is this model called uh, Frazetta, right? Like I'm sculpting uh, him right now. And uh, let's say if I get like this displacement map here, number one, this is the one I should have most of the, the face stuff. So I'm gonna open this one. And when you export the displacement out of ZBrush, that's a 32 bits uh, and also um, uh, uh, EXR and also at base zero, that means like the base level instead of like uh, being like 50% uh, gray, which is like base uh, 0 0.5, right? Uh, in this case, it's base zero. Well, what that means is that it starts at zero, which is black, and then because the 32-bit maps, it can get, it can actually go positive and negative. It can go like negative values. That's why it doesn't matter if it's black. Uh, it still can go like negative black, so we can you still get the deeper stuff represented in the map and the higher stuff as well. Uh, the the way that Arnold uh, uh, works with the displacement maps, he expects you to export with base zero. So that's why I always export base zero from ZBrush. Uh, because it's a direct connection. I just like plug it in my uh, uh, Maya Arnold and everything renders fine. But when you look at the map itself, you don't see much, right? You're gonna see some red areas right there, like slightly, but for the most part, it's almost black. So the first thing you're gonna do, you're gonna have to figure out uh, a way to neutralize this in a way that we can actually visualize the detail, okay? So I'm gonna start with adding a few layers in here. So as you can tell, it's a 32 bits RGB right here. Right, that's the name of my uh, file in there, it's like 1001, that means it's uh, the first tile of my Mari UDIM layout for the UVs. And I'm gonna just click this guy here and I'm gonna add an exposure uh, adjustment layer, okay? So the exposure is right here. And then I'm gonna add a few numbers in here and try to, to get like things uh, to, uh, to show better, right? So if I crank it here, you're gonna start seeing some of the detail, but it's going too strong. So we're gonna have to balance things a little bit. Let's try like 240 something to 50. This one is gonna be 0.02 something like that. And this guy here are gonna bring to about zero, let's see, 0 060 something like that. I think it's like 60 around here. But at this point it's still a little confusing. You cannot see a lot of the stuff that's going on in there. So let's add another layer here, adjustment layer. I'm gonna click this guy here again. I'm gonna do a uh, hue and saturation. And I'm gonna desaturate the whole thing. So now, we start seeing the map itself, right? So the main concern here at this point is that the map has to be uh, very, very visible overall without uh, uh, clamping, you know? It's like you cannot have any clamp uh, uh, happening here. And by that I mean like the colors have to be uh, levels of gray across the board without anything burning, you know? It's like imagine that you have, like if I go back to my exposure in here, if I have something like this, see how much is burning right here? The blacks became like super black in here. The whites very, very white. So they're clamping in there, they're flattening, right? You have to try at all costs to prevent that. So you can find like a an average right here, which you, you might be able to see a little bit of that, you know, it's like the extra black right here. I'm gonna try to correct that slightly by, you know, like bringing the slide, uh, actually the offset in here, a little bit higher. So something like that, so it's not so burnt and a little bit down right here. So at this point, we have a little map like that. Maybe the contrast can be a little bit better. Let's try something like this. And overall, it looks really good. I mean, like it's just maybe a tiny little bit of blacks right here, but overall it looks really good, right? So uh, you can see like I have my pores, my detail is all in there. So this is the first step you're gonna, you're gonna do, okay? And this is gonna be very different depending on the type of uh, character you're sculpting. The detail is gonna look different. The depth you're gonna be sculpting is gonna be different. But at this point here, I have those values that I found in here, right? So let's take, uh, uh, take note of those exposure 
a values in here. So I have like 3.11 in my case here, in yours is gonna be a different 0 0.2424 and 0 0.65, right? So I'm gonna take note of those. And now let's do something else. So in order to reset this to my original file I just opened, that was the EXR, I'm gonna go to history in here. I'm gonna just click the top node and now it's back to the original one we just opened, right? So let's explore the actions menu here in Photoshop, which is extremely powerful, okay? Let's create like a new action set in here. I'm gonna create a little folder and I'm gonna uh, just call this one like uh, cavity, cavity maps, something like that. And then I'm gonna click on it and I'm gonna create a new action now. So this is gonna be the action in here. I'm gonna just do like a displace, uh, displacement, uh, let's see, this, this Z from ZBrush, right? And then something like that to cavity, right? So that's the name of my action there. If you wanna do like add a little color here or something, it's fine too. So this place, uh, displacement Z uh, to cavity, right? So I'm gonna record it. So when you click record, everything you're gonna be doing from now on is gonna be record, recorded in a sequence. And it's, it becomes a macro. So after that, you can, uh, you know, it's like just play the macro and you can actually repeat all the actions for all the other maps that you have in that sequence, right? If you if you have like 10 maps, you can actually play this sequence and, and do this one by one in Photoshop or uh, automating the whole thing. I can show you how to automate the process as well. So I'm gonna click record and now I'm recording things. So I'm gonna repeat those steps I did before. I'm gonna go to exposure. I'm gonna make sure I match those values that I had before. I took note 3.11, uh, 0 0.2424 and this 1.65, right? And now I'm gonna add another layer, another adjustment layer. That's gonna be my hue and saturation. And I'm gonna just adjust it to no saturation like that, right? Um, and then now that I have this one, those steps are recorded as you can tell right there. I'm gonna just collapse the whole thing. I'm gonna just say flatten image, right? So I got rid of everything. It's gonna just collapse the entire thing. And the, the thing about the cavity map is that it is a eight bit map. It has to be like a, you know, it's like an eight-bit map. It cannot be like, uh, you know, it's like a 16 or a 32. Even though it can convert later on, but for this process, you have to convert to 8-bit. So I'm just gonna do this. I'm gonna go to mode, 8-bit channel right here. You see, it's coming from 32 to 8-bit. And now you're gonna switch from local adaptation in this method here. This drop-down, you're gonna uh, put like exposure and gamma. Okay. So I'm gonna click that one and now it, it preserves exactly like I had before, all the contrasts are, are the same. I'm gonna click OK and now this is an 8-bit map, okay? So the next step is a very simple one, but before you go there, remember that those first steps that I just did in here, they only gonna work if you have a map that uh, has enough contrast to show you the positive and the negative stuff without clamping, just like I said before. No pure whites, no pure blacks, right? Just uh, like levels of gray. So in a way that you can see the pores and the, the wrinkles and everything. So that's a, a must, you have to do this. Independently if you if you are gonna try to um, to convert a map that's 32 bits like this one, or a, or even a 16 bits, you have to have this type of uh, visual here before you can go for, uh, forward with the rest of the process, okay? And again, it's gonna be dependent on the type of character you have, the, how deep you sculpted your, your details, things gonna be very different, right? So you might have to change the exposure values in there. But uh, visually, that's kind of like the result you expect to, to have for it to work, okay? So from this point on, you're gonna go to filter and you're gonna go to your filter gallery. So in filter gallery here, it's already pre-selected for me. So we have this uh, poster edges right here, right? Poster edges, it's a very cool little filter that does that. So it posterizes the whole thing. So it's gonna go in, uh, you see like those areas in there, they're around the pores, uh, you know, it's like the, the black heads in the nose. Those are all the pores we had. If you're familiar with ZBrush, the way you export the, uh, the cavity maps out of ZBrush, you're probably very familiar with the way this looks already. It looks a lot like it. Uh, the posterization here, obviously, if you increase more colors, uh, is not gonna do anything for you. It's you rather have something very low, like a zero or you like that one is still, you know, it's like it's gonna just incorporate more and more levels of gray if you keep going higher in here. But at, at zero here, you have pretty much like a black and white map, which is what we want, right? Uh, for the edge intensity here, you're gonna see things gonna change. Let's go like zoom in in here. 
So I'm going to go to one, for example, uh, zero, right? So that's a very, very tiny kind of level of cavity map. I would rather use something a little bit bigger, like one, for example. And the thickness here as well is going to influence. So the thickness is going to show how much detail you can get. So you can actually play with this and see uh, how far you want to go in terms of the thickness of the cavity. So I would say like four for me works, something like this. So four, one for edge intensity and then zero for posterization. And I'm just going to click OK. So now I have a map that looks like this. All I have to do is to just add another uh, adjustment layer. I'm going to just put like uh, levels in here. I click levels. And then I'm going to bring this slider down all the way until I get like a fairly black and white kind of map. So I'm going to just zoom in in here. Let's see something like that. And then let's say maybe I can crank a little bit of the black in here towards that direction and then the white towards this direction until I have like a fairly white map all together. So white just with the blacks in here uh, as detail, right? So at this point here, I'm happy with it. I'm just going to close it. So let's do another time here. Let's just collapse this entire thing. Going to go here, like this little menu here. Click on it. Going to say flatten image. Then I'm going to click this image here, click on the layer, drag it to this plus sign. So it creates a copy of it. And now let's do three little things. Let's uh, actually multiply this one. I'm going to click multiply. So it's multiplying with the lower layer. And then the lower layer, we're going to do a little bit of an adjustment here. This is optional if you want to make it prettier, right? So I'm going to click the layer in the bottom and I'm going to just go and say uh, blur and then Gaussian blur. And I'm going to just do like a very tiny blur of like 0 0.5 or even lower if you want, optional. And then I'm going to go to the top one now, click on that one. And I'm going to say the same thing. I'm going to go to Gaussian blur and I'm going to say, let's blur it higher. Let's say one, for example, double that. So 0 0.5 and then one. So now I have a, a smoother version of my cavity. It looks pretty nice. And I'm going to just collapse this entire thing again. So let's say, uh, sorry, a flat image. So it's all flattened again. Now I have my cavity map, perfect, ready to go. So let's just save it. I'm going to save as, okay? And I'm going to do something here. I have my source images. That's my inside of my Maya folder where I save everything. I'm going to create the subfolder in here uh, just for us to, um, uh, let's see, new folder. Let's just do like a cavity. Just going to name like that, right? And I'm going to save this guy right here. Not going to change anything. Maybe the profile, just remove it. And I'm just going to say save. Okay. And then I'm going to say OK. I'm not compressing or anything. So it's uncompressed uh, TIFF. So save. And then now I can actually close it without saving. So now I can stop my action right here. So at this point, I got this entire thing recorded, right? So uh, the way that it works is like this. At any point, you can actually turn on and off any of those actions independently here. So I'm going to turn off the save and close the last two steps because I don't want to close it so we don't see the result. So let's tr test this action first and see if it worked. Okay. So let's try open recent. Let's get this guy here. That's the recent one we had. So we open right there. So let's test it. In order to run it, you're just going to click this little uh, the name of the action itself, so this Z to cavity. I'm gonna hit the play button, and if you're lucky, we're gonna get everything ready in, you know, in working. So that's what we got in there. Uh, obviously, uh, it's good if you can test in different types of uh, in different U dims first to make sure that things are not clamping. You know, for example, I see a little bit of clamping right here at the top, and I see still a little bit right at the the nasal labial fold right here. So, you know, it's like a little too dark in there, right? But again, like it, it all depends on how good was your adjustment at the very beginning when you use the exposure layer, right? To get things uh, rolling. And if you can prevent like uh, some clamping in there, it's very likely you're going to get a better map than this one, okay? So now we have a map saved in there. So how you auto uh, automate this whole thing? Because that would be very cool if you can automate, right? So I'm going to just click this one. Let's say you have a folder with multiple maps. Let's uh, Let's do this. Let's uh, go over here and let's copy a couple of them uh, to another folder, for example. Let's uh, convert like the, this one here 
actually uh, this one and then number three and then the number five so like one three and five I'm gonna copy I'm gonna just create another folder here just for you to you know so I'm gonna just name it oops sorry uh, displacement displacement okay and then so I have displacement and the cavity so I'm gonna copy those three maps inside of displacement in here and I'm gonna delete the one I generated in cavity right that was a uh, when we copy uh, actually when we saved we saved inside of a cavity so now I have a displacement and a cavity folders and this one has the source images all the displacements I want to convert to cavities so how we do that so let's copy this one to memory so control C right and let's automate this whole thing so we're gonna go to file automate batch I'm gonna click that one I already have things set up in here the way it works is like this if you have an action selected like this one once you open this interface, it's going to pre-select it for you. So it's going to show you right here, right? Uh, obviously, you can switch to any of the other subfolders in here and then any other action inside of them from here. But by default, if you have that selected, it's going to populate for you in here, which is what you want. So you're going to have, uh, you make sure that you have as a source a folder and you're going to click choose. And then in choose, you're going to just paste it. So this is my folder where the displacement maps are. So this is going to be the source, right? Uh, for the destination, then you're going to switch. By default, I think it says none in here. You're going to click uh, folder as well. And then you're going to go, instead of like displacement, you're going to go one level up. You're going to put cavity. So this is the empty folder that we have now. And you're going to click this button here that says override uh, action uh, save as commands. Right? And then you're going to turn on those two options here. We're going to keep those ones off. So it's going to be override action and include all subfolders going to be off and the other two is going to be on for the for this one here it says stop for errors by default you're going to switch this to log errors to a file and then you're going to save as uh, and you're going to put like anywhere in your hard drive in this case here I'm saving my documents in here right like it, it can be any name it's just for it to kind of redirect you know it's like if there is an error instead of stopping the script it's just like kind of like redirects to that uh, that little file and that's it you're not going to change anything from this point on here uh, but before I go forward here what's missing I forgot to turn it on make sure you have the save and the close uh, on as well remember we saved that as a little test have those ones on because we're gonna need it right around here you're gonna see again so you see like this override action save as that's what we want right there right so I'm gonna just put back in here let's find the cavity again the destination cavity the origin let's double check if you have the displacement so displacement and then it goes to cavity and everything else is the same that we set up before right folder blah 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 so now I'm just gonna click OK before I click OK let's just check this folder here which is the cavity folder let's keep it here and then let's just watch what happens okay I'm gonna click uh, OK in here and I'm gonna switch to that folder and we're gonna watch Photoshop processing the, each one of the images in the background and if you're lucky you're gonna get them to save right here in this folder so it's gonna go to the second one now one is already exported so the second one is exported this one is probably like a, it doesn't have a lot of detail it's probably like ears and neck um, and then obviously you have some if you have some artifacts you can fix that in Photoshop right so maybe not the best choices for my maps because you know it's like the first one is probably really good so that's the one we did first you can zoom in you can see all the cavity maps are in there right so things are good and then the second one is probably just the next stuff so you have the, your next stuff right there and then uh, you see like all those artifacts for example like this is like the edge of the lower part of the torso I believe and those ones are the edges of the ears in Photoshop very easily you can just like paint a little bit you know and this kind of detail here this little black area is one of those you know probably clamped at some point uh, in the map and I didn't notice but if you're careful with that step you can get like much cleaner versions of these maps okay uh, this one here probably like doesn't have anything it's just the contours of uh, you know it's like something I didn't sculpt at all probably like the shoulders or something like that so that's why it's not showing but anywhere you have detail we should have something very similar to this type of detail you know uh, this type of map so that's how I generate my uh, my cavity maps and uh, let me just switch in here so I hope you guys enjoyed you know uh, this is a very fast way of doing it if you work in production sometimes you have a set of uh, 
50, 60, 100 different UDIMs that you have to export cavity maps. Just imagine doing this like from a HD geometry model that you have to go like in each one of those little chunks and then paint inside of those masks, you know, it's like a select by, ma by, by cavity first, paint inside of the mask, export the map, you know, it's like it's, it's a nightmare. It can be very, very time consuming. And then again, like uh, even though ZBrush has a way to export cavity maps out of the multi-map exporter, the settings are a little funny and I never liked the way the, the, the result, you know, it's like out of it. This one looks a lot like uh, when you select by cavity and then you paint inside of those mas masks and export, but it's a way faster way to do it. Because that way you can have a model, let's say, with 500 million polygons, which one of the models I'm working recently uh, has close to that, close to half a billion polygons, right? And uh, imagine that, you know, it's like if you have to select things or try different methods, you know. This is a very simple, uh, you might say like, well, maybe that's not the best cavity I've ever seen in my life. But I tell you, this is what we use in production. Is I export my cavities like that and it's used in production. Never got complaints about it. So that means that the texture artists are actually happy with the stuff I'm exporting for them. And uh, I'm glad to share with you. So I hope you enjoyed it. If you enjoyed this video, just like uh, subscribe, uh, click the, the little bell to get notifications for the next one. And please help to spread the word, you know, just like share the link and, um, and let your friends know. Uh, if they are like uh, looking for solutions for, you know, exporting cavity maps in a very, very simple and fast way, I, I believe this is the one to, to go with, you know. So have a great day uh, or a great night and I uh, see you next time. See ya.